the first two Sundays we talked about some different things, but today we're going to kind of get into just a little bit of how to pray in certain situations. He actually has several. He has how to pray when you're discouraged, how to pray when you're trying to witness about God, how to pray when you're feeling uh, you need an anchor, how to pray when you're stuck in the mud. And I know that some of us, you know, around this country in the spring and in the fall need to know how to pray when we're stuck in the mud because it's a very real possibility. But I want to focus on this one that's how to pray in storms. Because truthfully, um, I think it kind of covers everything. It really does. Uh, if you read the book, you'll, be, you'll enjoy the stories that he tells with all the different chapters. But in this one, he talks about this story that, that we've heard about living through storms. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a good lightning storm. I know they're dangerous and all that kind of stuff. But if there's a, a good storm coming up, my wife will head to the basement and she'll, you know, get in the proper corner. And me, I'm looking for the lawn chairs. So I want to watch the lightning. I love it. It's cool. Come on. Who wouldn't love a good lightning storm? They're fun. And, and they are pretty impressive to realize that all that power God has control of. It's amazing. Now, this is a storm I've never seen. A storm on the ocean. But I know those can be pretty frightening. I'm, I don't... I'm not afraid of boats, but I'm a little afraid to be on, you know, in a storm like that. You know, the, the wind and the waves going, and, and there's no solid ground underneath. I feel, I think I'd feel the same way about an earthquake. I don't think I'd like that. But around here, the storm that we're more used to is a blizzard. Oh, I don't know. That, not that kind of blizzard. This kind of blizzard, right? Where you look out the window, you can see, you can see the road, right? You can see the car. We get weather like that and people are saying, oh, you know, I might be 10 minutes late. And then they head out. Yeah, blizzards. We live in a country where we see storms. We see some pretty awesome storms. Uh, some blizzards are really, really, really frightening. And even the blizzard at Dairy Queen is kind of frightening. <laughs> oh, wow. But the story that we're looking at today is Jesus' disciples are out in a boat. And it is just a boat, trust me. It's not a ship. It's a boat. Um, a lot of boats that people put out on the lakes around North and South Dakota would be every bit as big as, as what these guys were on that day. Twelve of them out on this boat. They're heading across the, the Sea of Galilee, which really is just a big lake. But it's well known for having quick storms that come up and are very, very furious and then go away. And they're out in the boat. Jesus is tired. He's asleep. And a storm comes up and the storm is crashing and it's, it's throwing the boat around and they're panicked. They're nervous because it's a storm and they're afraid. They don't want to drown. They don't want to fall overboard. And Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. And finally they, they go back and they say, Master, Master, aren't you, aren't you worried that we're all going to drown? He gets up and he calms the storm. And all of a sudden, there's nothing to be afraid of. Now, we go through thunderstorms and lightning. Some of you might have even been out on a a boat in the lake when a, a strong wind comes up and it's throwing you around. Might have even been out in the ocean in a, in a big storm out there. But we all have storms. We have them every day. Storms where we're just afraid. We're afraid of something. It might be something really big and scary or it might be something small, but we're afraid of what's going to happen or what might happen. We, uh, we wonder whether we'll get through it, whether we'll survive. Or maybe we're just worried. You know, we're worried about our family. We're worried about finances. We're worried about our job. We're worried about our relationships. We're just worried. <clears throat> That's every bit as much of a storm as the wind blowing and the snow building up. Or maybe we're just anxious. We don't even know why. 
We're filled with anxiety. We're filled with doubt and fear. We all have to live through storms. But we can find this place. We can find that place. As we look at this today, the storms, the storms will come. One of my favorite verses in Scripture, and there's a lot of them that I like, but this one's really good. In, uh, in John's Gospel, there's a long section where Jesus is talking with his disciples and preparing them for when he's going to be gone because he knows the future. They don't, even though he keeps telling them they don't. And in uh, the second part of uh, chap uh, verse 33 in chapter 16, he says this to them. In this world, you will have trouble. Now that's a weird verse to like, right? To know that I'll have trouble in this world. Part of the reason I like that is because Jesus says this to his disciples, to the ones he's sending out. He said, guys, just because you follow me, just because you preach my gospel, just because you're my people, doesn't mean that you're immune from the troubles of this world. You know, so often we, we get this idea that, that Christians don't ever have any troubles. And if we are having troubles, then there must be something wrong with us. You know, if we're struggling, if we're anxious, if we're afraid, if we're nervous, if we're just not sure about something, we get this feeling that there must be something wrong with us because Real Christians wouldn't be worried or anxious. They wouldn't be afraid. But Jesus said to his disciples, gathered there in the upper room, in this world, you will have troubles. So friends, don't, don't ever think that just because you're nervous about something, just because you're suffering through something that seems like such a storm in your life, don't ever think that that is because you're not Christian enough. You're not a strong enough Christian. Read the lives of the disciples once and, and find out some of the things they struggled with and fought through. Read about the life of Paul, who was beaten, who was thrown in prison, who was cast, you know, on an island in the middle of nowhere, who was imprisoned and eventually executed. And he even struggled with some doubts and with some fears. And you can't get much stronger a Christian than Paul. Friends, it's a part of life. We live in a broken world, and in this broken world, there'll be storms that come. And, and the, the idea is not to think, what's wrong with me? The idea is to think, how can I get through this? So we go back to the story in Mark, and we have Jesus in the boat with the disciples, and they're in this terrible storm, and they're scared. They're literally terrified. They're petrified. They don't know what to do. And then they remember, hey, Jesus is here. So they call to him, and he gets up. Did you notice that? He was sleeping through the storm. He... He got up when they called to him. He took care of the problem. See, when the storms of life come on us, we need to remember that in the figuratively in the back of the boat is Jesus. Jesus is there. Jesus is ready to hear our voice when we call out to him. But the key is to call out to him. We need to call to Jesus. He wants to come and help us. He, was, he is willing to help us, but he's also willing to let us do it ourselves if we think that's what we need to do. See, that's the crazy thing about, uh, about how God works. God gave us free will. God gave us the opportunity to <laughs> To call on Him or not to call on Him. To believe in Him or not to believe in Him. To trust in Him or not to trust in Him. To take His help or to 
try to struggle through it ourselves. Later on in the book, when he uh, gets to talking about being stuck in the mud, he tells a story of uh, when he and his children, he has, has four young children, and uh, another family went up to their lake cabin, which at the time they went up to was just a hole in the ground that they were building a building in. And there was this giant pile of dirt, but it had turned into a giant pile of mud. So, you know, it's two acres of land they went up and they were going to show the other couple around this new structure they were building. And they said to the kids, you can do anything you want to, but stay out of that pile of mud. And you know what happened, right? Because every one of you would have done the same thing. They went into the pile of mud. And they were having a big time. They kind of stayed on the edge and they threw mud at each other. And it was fun and games until his oldest son decided they were going to play King of the Mountain. And he was going to be the king of the mountain. And he got up onto the pile of mud. You know, he didn't really get up onto the pile of mud. He walked under the pile of mud and sunk in. And he was about 10 at the time, and he was a little nervous, but he thought he could get himself out. And so he, he tried, and he struggled, and finally he just gave up. And he started to holler, Dad, Dad, Dad. And Dad came and found him. He said, we, it took two of us to get him out of this mud pile. And it was obvious that he had tried to get out because when we got him out, his boots were in a different spot. And he was in his stocking feet. And he was mud just about every place you could be mud. And he finally realized he needed help. That's the problem so many of us run into is we think we can do it ourselves. And we've been taught that. <clears throat> you know, my, my dad said, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Just take care of it. Do it. And that's a good thing. It's not bad to, to realize that there are things we can do. But you know what? The best thing we can do is say, God, help me. I'm in over my head. I'm... <laughs> I've made a mistake. I've, I've done the wrong thing. I'm, I'm in a storm and I can't stop the storm. Help me. And so they did. They called out to Jesus. And he took care of the storm. But, and there's always a but. But sometimes, sometimes he doesn't still the storm. There's a song that has a line in it that says, sometimes he calms the storm, sometimes he calms his child. A lot of times in the storms of life, God doesn't take the storm away. God just helps us to realize that the storm isn't anything compared to his power. And that we can truly and honestly lean on him and call to him, and even if the storm keeps going, Way back in, in the Old Testament, we have the, the story of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We remember that story. Where they wouldn't bow down to the king's idol and to the king, and so they, they were going to burn them up. And they stoked up the big furnace so hot that when the guards tried to throw them in, the guards burned up. And they threw them in the fire. And the king looked into the fire. And instead of three, he saw four. You know, God didn't take the fire away. God didn't put it out. He just went in there with them and helped them come through the storm, come through the fire. Sometimes he doesn't calm the storm. It doesn't become all lovely and, and beautiful. It becomes... Well, it's still a storm. But we feel like this. We feel that calm. We're not afraid. Because God has calmed us. And we realize, hopefully we realize, that God can be trusted. And that's the big key. We can trust in God's goodness. 
The second part of the verse that I, that I said is, is one of my favorites. And here's the reason it's my favorite. is because right after he says, in this world you will have troubles, <coughs> right after that he says, take heart. <coughs> take heart, guys. In this world you'll have troubles, but don't worry. I have overcome this world. So we live in this world. And the troubles we have are in this world, but God's overcome this world. We have to live here for a little while. We have to struggle through some of the storms and through some of the anxieties and the fears that we have in our lives. But we, we have a Savior who has overcome this world. God wants good for His people. He wants us to call on Him. He wants us to trust in Him, even, even in the midst of the storm. Friends, I, I know so many of us are going through storms in our lives right now. And we're trying to do it ourselves. And you know you get worn out because you can't do it yourself. You can grab hold of your bootstraps as much as you want, but when they're three feet down in the mud, <coughs> you're not pulling up anything except a handful of mud. And we need to trust that God is there for us, that he will give us that strength, that he will guide us and direct us, and that he wants good for you and me. There's a lot of storms in our lives, but he doesn't always calm them. But even when the storms don't get calmed, he calms us. So in the middle of the storms that you face, Every day, every minute sometimes, remember to call on Jesus. Remember to trust that he wants good for you. And even though you may need to go through the rest of the storm, just know that he'll go through it with you. When he left his disciples, he left them a big task. And in Matthew 28, he tells them, go into all of the world baptizing and teaching this good news that I've told you. But he finishes up with something that's sort of like that passage in John. He says, and lo, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. He said, I'm, I'm not going to leave you on your own, guys. I'm not going to leave you alone. The Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit goes with us. God's presence will go with us through the storms, through the anxieties, through the troubles, through anything, if we call on Him. That's all He asks. That we call on Him. And He will either calm the storm or He'll calm us. But we need to call on Him. We need to trust in Him. And we need to believe in His goodness. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And that means all the time. Amen. Amen. So next week we're going to finish up this, this series, Talking with God. And the message next week is, now what? Since we've learned all this about prayer, now what? I hope you can join me if not. Thank you, uh, Ray, and, and the church council that decided that we'd have a camera so we could record this so folks can catch up with that. Not that what I have to say is anything that great, but what God has to say really is. So join us next week, and we'll finish up. But today, remember, pray in the storms. Just call to Him. He knows what you need.